probably one of the best hands we could five bet jam with. Uh, so if people start kind of like there was more four bet going on than I expected. Um, if I want to five bet a jam a hand as a bluff, it's probably this one. Yeah, Pietro. Pietro, Pietro. Yeah, let's go for it. Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be playing live Zoom 100 cash game on PokerStars mid-stakes action. But before we're going to jump into the action, I would really appreciate you liking the channel. And if you're new, uh, don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on any content. But before we're going to jump into the action, I quickly want to um, show you how I prepare myself for, for certain sessions. And yeah, usually I try to... Um, yeah, I, I try to set some goals for for my session, which is today I want to try to play a 3-bet only strategy for middle position against under the gun raises. So we see a range here for under the gun raising 2.5 big plans. And you can see that uh, in, in theory, we actually want to play a 3-bet only strategy in these kind of situations, um, especially against the 2.5 big blind open raises. Uh, the, the the bigger the open raise, and especially when it goes to more to three big blinds, the lower the EV of flat calling and the more we incentivize to go for three bet and to overtake the initiative because we also have additional fold equity. And it's something that, especially in tournaments, I feel like I was flat calling too often, ending up in multi-way pots, so especially eights, pocket nines, pocket tens, which feels very natural as a flat call because we don't want to isolate ourselves against better hand, but our opponents, they're going to be calling sevens, they're going to be calling sixes, they're going to be calling a hand like ace 10 suited or king jack suited. So we still have really good equity in a four bet, uh, three bet pot and four betting will happen very rarely, especially when we have an ace and we can easily call a four bet with let's say tens, nines or jacks. So don't be afraid of that and don't think like, yeah, but I'm going to three bet fold so much equity with king 10 suited. Yeah, but you also, if you three bet, you knock out so much equity behind. You knock out hands like eight, ace eight suited that might overcall on the button. Also the open raisers got, got a lot of, going to fold a lot of weaker suited aces. And also going to fold a lot of off suited broadways. So always see both sides of the coin in general, the EV comes from your fold equity, the equity of if called. And of course, uh, yeah, fold equity comes with the equity you're folding out. Sometimes you're race folding a relatively high equity hand. But to be honest, I prefer three bit folding king 10 suited and then facing a four bit with aces. I don't mind because king 10 suited, it's not like it, it has an insane amount of equity against aces. So don't forget that. Don't be too uh, thinking too, too, too much one sided. On, on, on certain outcomes or certain contingencies, it's always all things considered. Let's jump into the action. Uh, here I'm just going to be, I think we can actually bet a little bigger. Um, I'm more afraid of, um, I think this is against a two and a half X, probably just a fold. Um, this guy is a recreational and um, so I don't think he necessarily calls flush draws because flush draws are, yeah. I mean, Jack-10 in clubs or Ace Jack, King Jack, but not sure if he limps those. It's more likely as something like 6-5 suited, pocket deuce, pocket threes. So I'm going to value bet here against uh, him again. And if he raises, we have an easy fold. There's certainly some queens in his range, and we also have a lot of queen X in our range as well. I'm not a big fan of check calling since, yeah, I don't expect him to call a lot of flush draws there. So it doesn't really make sense. Yeah, trying to tag some players. Uh, deuce three, four against a three and a half X open race, unless he's recreational. Uh, he shouldn't have hands like ace five off or six five off too much. So uh, yeah, I expect him to have a lot of pairs. And also if I have something like sevens or sixes or eights, I wanna go for a big C bet sizing. Uh, this guy with his half stack uh, might be recreational. You will also see me doing a lot of flat calling depending on uh, what players I have behind. I'm just doing a small protection. Uh, this is a nasty river here. 
Yeah, he could have ace four, ace five suited, ace two suited. He can still have threes and fours. I don't really see a value, but he can have pocket sixes. So I think we have to fold. Uh, check behind. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's why you should play your, your strong hand straight forward. He definitely missed a big setup there for for him. At uh, three bet pots, I think we can go for, uh, for range bet here from the big blind. Uh, we're not going to have too many king queens, king jacks against this position. So we have a lot of over pairs and then some like 9-8 suited, 9-7 suited. So actually this board is quite good for us. Uh, however, um, I know that people are not stabbing as much as they're supposed to in 3-bet pots. So I think I will attain a higher EV by uh, checking and then um, yeah, get more information and then check the, check the row. This should be a board where we want to be over betting. Um, against the big blind range. Uh, kind of sucks losing against the ace queen, but uh, wow, wow. Oh, wow, 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 my friend, you're going to get some value there. Um, find four, lose king, whatever. Back to. Um, even if he folds now, something like 8, 7, 8, 9 has a lot of equity against me. Uh, and also here, this is something I see over and over. People misplaying their, their value hands in 3-bet pots. Um, yeah. Like, let's say we have something like Ace-9 or Ace-10, uh, where we want to bluff catch. We we lose money less money as we're actually supposed to. So um, that's why I don't necessarily see bet anything out of position because people are just so... Yeah so scared with their their variance sevens against this sizing i think i'm going to three bet against the three x i would just call but i see a lot of mediocre hands with this sizing here from the small blind and if he four bets we can call <clears throat> i think a lot of jack tens or queen jacks are raising with this sizing I'm gonna go for a lead here. Nice. There's no point in betting big. It's not that we want to build a huge pot with this hand, but it's certainly strong enough to value bet against the five or six. And when they don't race, um, yeah, I think now we can go for a bigger turn bet against one player and then check it back on the river. There's still hands like three, four, three, six, uh, six, four, six, seven, uh, flush draws. And now we can check forward. Yeah, also you don't need to get fancy trying to, you know, represent the sets. I mean, we have very, very, very good blocker for potentially raising the river, but don't think people are gonna fold ever flushes here. Uh, makes some sense with some hands to see bet half pot here. Uh, it's certainly a close defend here with um, with my king seven off. Um, would bet something like nine six or like very weak hands. I think we don't want to block king high. Is king jacks king tens? Uh, this turn sizing should be a little higher. And here we should step. And now we just shove the river. Um, I think perceived it's a really bad river um, since we have very little bluffs. I mean, we could have something like a seven or, you know, like six, something like six, five turning a bluff. But I think people are not aware of this. Alright, <laughs> I mean that's that's pretty easy for him. That just a bit. oh Kamukti. A very bad board for my under the gun range. Um huge nut disadvantage. I 
Uh, five is certainly close. Don't mind calling. Now we take the showdown value here. Just calls with ace jack high. Um, I definitely want to have some sort of backdoor uh, flush draw here. Um, if they choose a small sizing, we can call. If it goes check, check, we could start bluffing this hand. Um, other than that, we can just fold. His sizing is really weird. His sizing is really weird. I um, feel like he's just betting for protection, but I'm going to start bluffing this combo here. I uh, see calling any pair. That's the question. Or is he always having... I think strong spades would bet the flop or turn. Um, and we can have any spade. So I'm going to for a large over bet. It's also really hard to bluff. Like we're bottom of our range. Um, Like he's gonna have a nine high spades or um, six high spades. Maybe he has something like king three that called once. We definitely put him to the test. Uh, do we wanna raise here? We definitely have more three X. So if we now picked up a weak flush draw, we could certainly raise think I will raise um, since we have more like 3-4 suited, 10-3 suited, jack-queen-3 suited that we have pre and there are two flush draws out there. Gonna be squeezing. If I have a weak flush draw I would also certainly raise there. Uh, calling is fine as well. There's a short stack in the small blind so potential recreational so it has a little bit more of an EV. Uh, just calling, he might be over calling hands he's not supposed to, such as ace nine off or ace eight off. And here we're not going to mess around just with a check high backdoor flush draw. Session didn't start well, but we try to keep it. I think four or five suited against under the gun um, is is a fine hand to three bet. Um, Your time's up. Oh fuck! Okay. I should turn on my table ninja so the time bank automatically go turns on. I oh, could check this one. Betting would be fine as well, but I definitely also want to have some really good hands in my check back range. And here I'm just going to bet. I think it's really good to not block sevens to pocket tens that have a hard time continuing on this board. Um, that's that's close, that's really close. Um, uh, he could still have ace queens or ace jacks, but the problem is that, or queen jacks, he's not gonna, he's not gonna um, slow down. Uh, we can go for a small check race or yeah, I think this board I prefer more for a small check race. I don't want to make it too big um, since we don't really want to play four stacks, but definitely because if I make it too big, I'm isolating myself against um, yeah, just stronger hands. And if I choose a sizing, he might still mess around with yeah some some weaker hands, which I definitely want to accomplish. And I still want to protect a little bit against you know um, his king four that you know can call can fold. I don't mind uh, taking the check here. Uh, definitely hitting some good hands blind versus blind, but unfortunately in 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 blind versus blind pots, the pots aren't that big as in other situations. And we go for. Uh, yeah, we bet an ace or seven. 
uh, nothing really else. So we're polarizing ourselves. We're not going to go for a thin. I mean, we could value bet king 10. Wouldn't be so bad. Um, seems recreational, so I'm going to be limping more than I'm supposed to. And now I'm going to be... Uh, and we're not block any spades, so we can make him fold something like king 10. Uh, we can make him fold um, flush draw. He, he has, of course, he has some like 10, 8 and 9, 10 that, is, that are not going to fold or an 8, yeah. But he has a lot of ace high flush draws, king high flush draws, king 10s, some better queen highs. Uh, would be probably better to bluff a 10 there. That's a bit small. Might be a little bit too loose, of course, but... I think it should be fine. He leads this flop, which is probably not so bad, but with two overs and a backdoor flush draw. Yeah, that's. I feel like this is just a protection race, maybe with a weak jack. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's what I thought, but it's still the hand is not good enough to re race. Or yeah, 10. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Wouldn't mind raising there and then checking the river. But this line is very often exactly something like this. Um, might actually be very close, to be honest. Like in MTTs, it's an easy call, but in, in cash game, it might actually be a fold against a 3x button race. Let's try to keep grinding it up. And I think when you try to move up from, let's say, NL50 to NL100, it's very important to not um, yeah, freak out that you think people are necessarily better. They will have a better understanding of ranges and might be bluffing more often, but it's not going to happen to an extent where you have to start making insane hero calls or um, yeah, be overly aggressive. I'm just going to call here. Winning a lot of blind versus blind pots. And um, hmm. the deuce and the three gives us some back to equity. I think we have to call once here. Oh, that looks good, He's king. <laughs> He's very short. He's very short. I think we just have to call. <laughs> Shoving. He's probably the stack to pot ratio is so small. He's four. Oh, we even we even got him counterfeited against this. Uh, that's lucky. Mm, yeah, his sizing is probably fine. He gets some value from the strong ace kings. <clears throat> yeah, queen seven off is certainly a fault. I think we can tag him as weaker player. And this is a very standard squeeze. Do we want to go for a thin value bet here? I think we can do that. Oh, with the back to a flush draw, I'm going for a little larger sizing. Um, 
Small is fine as well. Sizing wise, I'm mixing up between two and a half X and three X in general from the button. Um, oh, without any back to flush row. Uh, well, sorry, from from the button, I usually make it a little. You're supposed to make it a little bigger, but I think it's better in practice to to size a little smaller because people play a very bad out of position rate to passive with check raising and. Um, Uh, with the king and spades, we have a good hand that we could continue bluffing. I'm going for a delayed pot bet here. Uh, get immediate forward. We block some king, 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 ten, king, queen, and spades. Um, and I would do the same with my with my value hands as well. And I think it's a legitimate strategy against checkback rangers. And we go for three streets of value unless the river is a fourth diamond. And as fast as he likes to call, I'm going for some fast bet as well uh, kind of plays in people's minds where they are very um okay i mean that's not really doesn't really make a difference but he could he could think about raising like wow could definitely be raising here is two pair at some point Lost the minimum, that's great. I was supposed to lose way more there with my bottom pair. And these are easy forwards. Forward is gonna be a complete. And I know a lot of people, um, I kinda I kind of always hate checking that too much because people are so freaking passive with their, with their stabbing. Um, that a lot of you guys want me to play just one table, but listen guys, you can, you can pause, you can, you know, go back. So, yeah, don't be too. Too mad about it if you if it's too many tables. As I said, just just pause. If there's something that is not clear for you. Um, but most people enjoy if I play more tables. Uh, King nine suit is going to be an easy call here against the button three uh, big nine three betting range. Uh, as you already noticed, there's much less 3-betting going on than on Zoom 500. Uh, this is pretty much the bottom, like probably a king 7 off. Um, depends on even... even uh, I think I should start betting here. Um, if he bets, it's really nasty because the queen is not very, very nice for me to have. Uh, I think now we can check down against his ace kings, ace queens. We don't need to try to bluff him off, even though we have very little bluffs um, perceived. <laughs> Two pair. Two pair. All right, we face the race. <sighs> Can we value bet this? This is nasty. He can have some queen jacks. This is really close, man. Um, against this big sizing, I'm just folding. I don't think we can value bet here, to be honest. I think it's just ace king, but I don't think ace king is calling. Ah, we just jam. Yeah. Well, that's that's quite of an overplay on this turn. I would say this was a present. This is a surprise, Clark. <laughs> this is just a real nice surprise.
Green it off, also certainly close, but I figured when I was working uh, on some cash game ranges that I'm probably a little too loose. <sighs> queen, I mean, it's just queen, a6. We unblock nines, tens. Let's go for a river bluff. I think unless they don't have an ace or queen, they're gonna fold. Like they have a lot of king, jack, king, tens, nines, tens. Um, queen eggs and clubs is possible, which would be not nasty, but apart from that, even kings is gonna have a hard time. Kalmakti, a very, very good regular, also from the Raise Your Edge community. Let's see. That's a bad turn. That's a bad turn. We certainly have less king high floats than than he's c betting. I'm just gonna fold here. I'm gonna check raise here. My pocket tens. I'm gonna three bet the six five suited. Pretty decent flop. We can work with that. And I think and if he has fives to nines, he's gonna call always. Even queens or kings might sometimes check back for pot control. So I go for one large bet and then check the check check for the river. Maybe go for a small black block bet, but yeah, that's 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 a bad run out. I think we just have to check for it now. I'm gonna second barrel here, make make him fold sevens to eights with all the equity we have. Oh yeah, as a jack. All right. That's a loose call, but he seems to be uh, short stacking, so very likely a fun player. Uh, this is just in fold here against an MP. Also not call like. The ranges are very tight in those situations. You can't make a lot of money there. So far, not a lot of four bets. I think um, in theory, we probably wanna be defending this sometimes, but again, on the stakes, it's not necessarily a thing or important, you know, to make these kind of plays. You can see the pool is quite soft and uh, people do a lot of mistakes. Uh, I'm gonna three bet here. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's a large four bet. Oh my God. But yeah, we have to call once and then play post flop. I can still be ace king, so. Are uh, we gonna go for a bet? Interesting. Yeah, probably ace king. Very interesting, this huge four bet sizing. Maybe people just really try to make some moves. A ah, really bad board here for us. I want to check raise my king 10 here against the cutoff range. Think a lot of better king eggs would probably size up. Uh, flush draws. It's definitely thin, but yeah, it's fine. Um, he makes it a little bigger than 4x. Would call ace 4, ace 5 suited, certainly. I think it's fine here to forward. 
Um, against 3x, yeah, as you've seen earlier on the picture, it's a very, very low frequency three bet against a two and a half x. So I think against the 3x, we just want to forward. I'm going to check call against the late bet. He still has queens, jacks, tens in his range. And now I'm going for, I think he has a lot of sevens, fives. I think queen 10, jack 10 would, would bet at some point. So I feel very comfortable. Uh, here's one short stack. I don't like where this is going. All right. Um, I'm just going, uh, we can also range bet this flop actually against the big blind range. Um, since there's a recreational in the pot. I'm going for straight value. Oh, I should be very betting. Like we, we're going to have a very little amount of 10x in our range. And we shove the river. Is there one cut straight? Nope. I mean, 10 8 was possible. King 10 in diamonds, but a lot of two pairs. You can have queen 9 in diamonds. You can have king queen in diamonds. Don't think he's ever folding it. Um, I want to be checking back this board with a decent amount of frequent. I uh, also don't want to face a check race here with my hand. So I'm just going to be checking it back. Yeah, we definitely call the churn. Even though the overbet sucks, but he could also protection bet something like ace 10, king 10, uh, where we also have an overcard. Could be bluffing with some queen jacks. And we still have the opportunity to yeah win the pot if the river breaks. Uh, do I only want to shove here? I think he goes for sin value here with the, with the set and might level himself. I don't think he's necessary. Like the jack clubs is pretty good. Like. Yeah, king, queen, and clubs. I don't think he overbets ace high, not flush draws, to be honest. Um, two pair snap, wow. Uh, I guess the big sizing we just call here. Wow, wow, wow. And uh, against the big sizing, we just check call our set. Against the small sizing, we can opt to raise. And we value bet the river. Oh yeah, river two pair, unlucky. I think that's just a cooler. Um. Yeah, actually, I'm going to sit out one table so we can. Uh, we can use this one. I'm just going to call here. Um, Forbidden, we're quite deep. Wait, am I? What the fuck am I doing here? Seriously? All right, we take this here and we sit out on this table. All right. Yeah, so the eight seven suited. Now we're gonna, it's a good trip. term, makes it less likely that someone has, um, that someone has. As a pocket sevens. 
I mean, that's what I mean. That's why I'm value shoving here. I think people just perceive me, you know, I have my ace king, ace, but I will never have them. Like I, I, in over bet, I will never purely call it ace king or um, I will never call ace king or ace queen on the turn. Like I have to have the ace king, ace queen and clubs that I check back. Like I'm just going to have it. Like I can have eight, nine, I can have seven, nine, like uh, I'm going to value bet the river as well. It's, it's pretty thin to be fair. Um, that's yeah, I should probably, I think, yeah, either small block bed or just, um, they have all king queens, king jack suited. Um, I think it's too big uh, against two ranges that can have like, but also it's ace queen and hearts. I think they have more combos of king queen, king jack. Um, I mean, if he shoves, <laughs> I'm gonna hate my life. Kind of, kind of turning my hand into a bluff. Maybe I'm folding out ace king and diamonds or something once in a while. It's probably not even was not my intention, but it's probably not too bad. If I make them fold ace king and diamonds. <laughs> If he tanks that long and I uh, shafts, then I'm just gonna. Oh, we got something value. What? Pocket jacks. Why? Yeah, he's two, three. Uh, we should probably be range checking our entire range. We're not gonna have. He's gonna have two, three, threes, four, five suited, and all these kind of hands. And yeah, we don't have a lot of value hands that can play three streets for value. Now we can value bet against anything that is lower than an ace. Probably one of the best hands we could five bet jam with. Uh, so if people start kind of like there was more four bet going on than I expected. Um, if I want a five bet to jam a hand as a bluff, it's probably this one. Yeah, Pietro, Pietro, Pietro. Yeah, let's go for it. Oops. <laughs> I'm in danger. Oopsie Daisy, and we're dead. That's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, and I'm also going to value bet here. The six is good. Now, if he has a six, he's not going to fold. A little hiccup there, but it's fine. A little, little hiccup. Queen Suda, we're definitely gonna call against the squeeze here. And we continue betting big on the on the turn. Flop I go for large sizing. I will go large, large flop and turn against the recreational. Um, if he raises, I'm out. Um, we can go for a small sizing. We can also go for one big bet immediately fold out his fours to sevens or pocket eights and, and then something like ace three or king three or three four three five suited um i think i'm gonna bet big flop and then check turn unimproved would be much better to have a heart i 
but um, also an exploit you can make where people literally don't start raising anything anymore if you bet big. Like you still want to have some raises. I think we know, like some weaker flush draws I would check back. We always can call it. I'm going to go for a second barrel against his ace high floats. <clears throat> Quite polarizing, of course. Actually, I don't need to bet that big against his ace high floats, to be honest. Don't need to bet that big. I think six or five is totally fine as well. And river, we bluff, especially against his queen jacks, ace jacks, ace queens that block a lot of my bluffs. Uh, if he has four sevens, he might find a call because I ha do have a lot of queen jacks, jack nines. Wouldn't be surprised, to be honest. But yeah, if he has ace jack himself or queen jack, um, I think we can actually bet quite large on this board with a lot of our hands. We get some value from like ace four. It was his stack size. He's also very unlikely having a lot of pairs in his range. So yeah, just expect a lot of ace jacks, ace tens. That's a bit scary that he checks. Probably he has sixes or sevens or something. <laughs> and the snap pot bet. All right, I'm out. Mm. Bit blind. Uh, it's a bit too weak. Wouldn't be the worst uh, open race with a potential recreational mid stack in the big blind. Uh, seven six suited. I'm going to be three betting here. These hands, these kind of hands, you want to be three betting uh, from the big blind, hundred big blind steep. Unless he, if he calls, if he calls squeezing, you want to be more towards jack ten suited and, and and queen ten suited. These sort of hands. six suited uh we can also check back some of our weaker a6 here facing elite uh yeah this is, uh, would be a bad bluff catcher <sighs> All right, that's a good river. I think I want to be quite polarized here as well. Like he was either uh, betting with a draw or he, he's not, I don't think he's doing with a five or an eight or a deuce to be honest. I mean, you never know, but more likely he's going to be doing it with an ace, like ace nine, ace 10, ace jack um, that he can't let go of now on the river. Or, yeah, he was just on, like, messing around. Yeah, I think he was just doing random stuff. What was it, like, eight backdoor six? Uh, King Queen suited would be a fine hand to forward with. And you were going to check race or hand. King Queen suited usually is a, is a fine hand to quote forbid with.
better than let's say ace jack off so. starting with a small bet uh we can certainly go for three streets here We are ahead against some draws, so we call flop call turn. Jack 10 off is uh, going to be a fold. Um, we need 33% equity against the pot bet. We have around 20%, like more like 19% with our flush draw. Um, yeah, but I think we have a lot of implied odds if we hit our flush. All right. I mean, yeah, he either has something or he's just fooling around with like king six off and trying to see a cheap showdown. So uh, the calling range is pretty inelastic, so you can size it up quite quite heavily there. Uh, do we want to lead here? It's probably not so bad. I'm going to start leading here as well. Expect a lot of checkbacks here. On the turn, we're gonna start polarizing ourselves. So we either have two pairs or nothing. With our gutter. He's betting quite big on the flop. It has to be Jack 10. King, is he turning something into a bluff? King. I mean, king, king Jack with the Jack and Clubs. He's not repping a lot. He's not repping a lot. Jacks, tens? I don't think so. Like Ace Jack with Jack and Clubs? Well, it would be. I think like it's hard. Um, I think I'm gonna get get catched quite often here. I mean, could have Jack Ten Queen Jack. Um. I have so many perceived draws here. I kind of have the six in diamonds, but I really don't want to bluff for the three. I think I'm going to catch here quite often. I think I'm going to call. Like, I, I just can't find. I think 10 9 and clubs would also size smaller. Oh, he was turning his hand into a bluff. Yeah. I really couldn't find any, any reasonable. Reasonable blast uh, value hands with this size and like he bets big on the flop. What is he doing it with? It's a king jack with the jack and clubs King 10 I think is he's probably more often choosing a smaller sizing But then on the other side it's also hard to find uh, bluffs, but he might there there are more potential bluffs than value hands He could be turning something like king jack uh, hearts king 10 hearts like these hands yeah it's just like king jack jack 10 jack 10 could be possible like without like jack 10 diamonds so there are already a few more uh a few more bluffs possible than where you oh do we call here well we should be value betting is king there I mean, the implies are pretty huge. Don't think also, I think Ace King isn't sizing that big twice. Um, Ace King could be possible. So the Jack could be dirty sometimes. Raising, we're not repping a lot. Call can't be too bad. Yeah. We have eight outs, 16, 17%. We need around 26, 27, more like 28. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a bad call if he doesn't value bet kings there. I mean, that's just. 
however, I will definitely print a lot of EV in this spot if I have Jack 10 or like, uh, yeah, these kind of hands that I occasionally have to bluff catch on the river. I mean, Kings is just a no brainer value bet on the river. <laughs> But again, if he doesn't value bait kings, my call is bad because I have a, a gap of 10% there. So I definitely need to make up um, how many big blinds. On the, 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 the. Um, I mean, I don't need to win a lot more on the on the river. That's uh, just a problem. Yeah, if I hit my seven and he checks back his king queen, this would be just so horrible. And this is what will help me to uh, leading the turn. Uh, sorry, I, I thought it was a limp pot, but he raised pre. Um, okay, <laughs> this is gonna be a line that I'm usually not taking. Uh, this put is yeah. He probably thinks I'm just goofing around. I'm just gonna keep. Hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I thought it was a limp pot. I don't know what he's chatting about, but whatever. Yeah, in pos position we can certainly call. Seems like a fun player. Let's go for a limp. Insta check back. We check call flop and we check for turn. Uh, he's gonna have four a deuce very often. This is sizing. Oh, it's actually not that bad. Uh, but he should follow. So he should rather pick hands like nine five or nine four. He's uh, a fun player. No action so far, he's queen, king, queen. That's definitely gonna be a little more action. <clears throat> aces, we haven't had aces a lot in the session or kings. Feel like people are not squeezing as now as much as they're so opposed to. You have seen in the range that I showed you earlier that it's very important to um yeah. I'm gonna squeeze here. Uh, it's very important to um yeah be three betting a lot from MP and hijack, but I think it's very unrealistic. Oh, damn it. 15 for Sammy, we have to call. I'm gonna make him an offer he can't refuse. Because now the sideboard is very small. He should be very careful with his betting. 
I think uh, it's going to be checking more back and this will allow us to realize more equity for obvious reasons. And our equity realization goes close to 100. Uh, is queen. Yeah, that's why I squeeze preflop because the button is very often going to be on like ace five suited, king queen, king jack, these type of holdings, and uh, you can just squeeze their pre. There's going to be three betting. It's going to be raising here. I think people, in theory, against a decent c betting strategy would probably not be a race, but the way people c bet out of position, I definitely want to be um, raising more often here. Uh, I don't think there's a need to c bet here. He's still going to be calling sixes, sevens, over pairs. Um, and we're also going to have um, some really, really strong hands in our checkback range by doing so. And we have a6, 6, 6 5. And now I go for large sizing here. I don't expect a lot of folds from over pairs. So sizing doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, he should definitely, like this is the problem where people think too much in absolute hand strength. Once he checks, he has some floats with let's say king, jack and spades, right? So he's gonna bluff those or like just his bottom king high floats. Um, so he's not having a dissonance range. So now once he checks, he's on ace queen and then over pairs. And he can certainly fold some over pairs. Like I would just call one, the ones with the heart. Uh, easy call here. And I think we have to call once here. And we just check it down with our jack. Try to win against tens, eights. So that's why this is also a spot where I wouldn't be bluffing a lot. Like with this sizing in particular, I always have it there. Um, got shot to the nuts, back to a flush draw. So yeah, this is really where you don't need to bother. What are we going to bluff here with the sizing? It doesn't matter. Like I wouldn't bluff ace, king and ace, ace and hearts or ace, queen. I, I just check back. Like I know he's not going to fold eights or nines. He just feels inclined to call here. Yeah, we definitely call once again here. It's a limp pot, so not a lot of strong hands in his range here. And just betting against like Jack five suited. Um, can he fold flush draws on the turn on a double paired board? Like that's the question. The V comes if he's able to fold Queen Jack, Queen 10, um, 10 high flush shots. I think yes, and we don't block any. So again, I'm choosing a sizing, the proper sizing in his range or the, w with the intention what I'm trying to attack. Like I don't need to bet big a pot here. I'm just trying to attack his Queen Jacks, Queen 10s. And we can certainly do like and say if I have an ace there, I, I size up because I know he's not going to fold a king on the turn, right? So. Um, just very exploitative poker. GTO helps you to understand poker and exploitative poker helps you to make poker. Let's slowly finish the session. Ace queen suited. Yeah, we can call, we can three bet, doesn't really matter. Um. Do I want to raise here? I think the hand is still strong enough to raise even against the pot bet. Uh, I don't think king high flush draws would be betting that big. So I'm going to go. I think not flush draws, but since the uh, ace is a club, it's pretty good. Uh, and he's going to have, yeah, not a lot though. Actually, maybe I shouldn't bet. 
Yeah, we block a lot of two pairs. But I think if he has like king queen or um, maybe, yeah. But is he calling ace jack, ace and diamonds against the race? Yeah, should probably betting small. I was a little bit too fast there with my sizing, too greedy. But it happens. And if we make him fold, let's say pocket jacks with one club, it's also not too bad. I think in this position, I'm just folding ace jack off. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the session. It was definitely a very interesting one. Um, I hope you could learn from my thought process and try to really play more exploitative poker. And if you think from, if you want to move up from NL50 to NL100, it's not so much about GTO. As you see, people do mistakes over and over again. And if you have watched my video about um, three reasons why you suck in poker, it's very often the same pattern over and over again, where people are attached to their hand strength. As you've seen the guy with his to bottom two pair in a three bet pod, this guy was just over pair in a three bet pod. They don't care about sizings. They fell in love, fall in love with their hand strength and you can exploit that. And it's not so much about trying to be balanced here on NL100, especially when you move up, people don't know you yet. Play your hand, Try to play the highest DV possible against this very opponent. Try to get as many reads as possible. Be very observant and then just play with the confidence and try. don't try to change your strategy. Just play your game, play your opponents and not what you think that NL100 is so much tougher and people are playing like gods. No, they aren't. So yeah, don't, don't be too afraid. And then I wish you best of luck in case you're trying to move on or move up. And if you have any questions, drop it in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and like. And then see you guys in the next video. Uh, and also don't forget to join our Discord. Stay tuned, stay strong, stay patient. See you guys.